बैग रिपोर्ट में एलेवेंथ में 2011 एंड इफ यू लुक एट दिस वन बिलियन टन इट मींस इट इज अनफ टू फीड ऑल द पीपल ऑन दिस अर्थ 650 नो बिलियन पीपल कैन बी 650 मिलियन पीपल कैन बी फेड विथ दिस फॉर टू इयर्स The total production is four billion tons, which means six times what is required for all the people on this earth. <coughs> That is the order, just you can imagine. So, in terms of physical facility, availability of physical facility, we already have six times what is required. as food for all the people on this earth so all this we will discuss we look into them one by one see and you can all find out how many of you think that the amount of food that you can eat to nurture your body is going to be limited in quantity Or I put it another way: Is there anybody who can eat unlimited quantity of food? <laughs> so it's all very simple. We'll do that, you know. One by one, we'll unfold into all these things. observations pit this we have already discussed in this the role of education is to facilitate the development of the competence to live with definite human conduct by enabling this transformation by ensuring all three that is right understanding relationship and physical capacity in every human being so education means developing right understanding Sanskar means developing this commitment, preparation, practice for right living, and you can see that this preparation includes learning right skills and technology. So learning right skills and technology is a part of this sanskar, right? and it has to be based on the right understanding. So the education is also required, sanskar is also required. For sanskar, you have commitment, you have preparation, and then you have practice or right living, which would include learning right skills and technology. So, are we able to ensure this? Do we want to ensure this? And these are the people who are involved: the parents, the teachers. society and with its environment plays key role in ensuring this education in sanskar and if all of them gone wrong where do we start that's the question right so we start with the teachers with the education so this is some of what we have discussed in the last session yeah. these five points Okay, come. <coughs> These are the observations. Holistic development is transforming to transformation to human consciousness. This involves all three: right understanding, relationship, and physical safety, leading to the fulfillment of basic human aspiration. The priority is clear. You know, one, two, three. The role of education is to facilitate this development in every human being. We want to provide such education. those involved with education particularly teachers has the responsibility of providing such an education and that is why we are focusing on the teachers <coughs> these are the five observations which we have made if there is any question we'll take otherwise we'll go ahead and try to unfold each one of them 
this issue of right understanding, the issue of relationship, and then finally the issue of physical facility. with all kind of people, you know, with the people in education, right? the people in business, right? the politicians, the administrative officers, even the jail inmates, people who have been you know, put in jail and who have committed three to five murders. <laughs> so all category of people we have tried and it turns up works with everyone and it is a need for everyone. <coughs> And if I look at it in terms of response, right, the response has been fastest with the prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is required. It is required for the uh, people in business and it is required for the people in administration. It is particularly required for the politicians right, who are supposed to lead the you know, country. So it is required for all of these people. I ask this question because uh, with the, especially with the business people, uh, do you get some, I mean, do you face with resistance because uh, their goal is completely different than educators and, you know, people like like-minded who come to this kind of, uh, for them it's easy to convince, but uh, <coughs> it might be difficult to convince those business people who want, whose goal is to make a profit. They, this would their goal. So we are trying to tell them to limit what they are, <laughs> you know, so it might be not Yeah, <coughs> you see, today if you look at the society, the goal is not very different. <laughs> <laughs> and it is unfortunate, of course, <coughs> that now everybody is, is now busy, you know, trying to focus attention on physical facility. So it is not much different, you know, that's one thing. But second thing is that, as I said, you try with any human being, right? And ask the right questions. Okay. He has no option but to say yes. Okay. He may take little less time or more time, right? For example, if you ta ask this question to the young boy, you know, of eight years of age, he will be immediately able to answer yes or no. Right? If you ask an old man or you know educated person, he will take lot of time to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only difference. So I keep saying that if you are educated, you know, it is good when you are coming to this workshop. If you are not educated, it is better. <laughs> because education means a whole lot of preconditioning, you know, put into you. Okay. So, in a way it is better. I keep telling this, you know, example of this definition. I, I went to one of my friends in Bhopal, you know, friend in Bhopal. So we reached there in the evening, afternoon, we had our food and then two of their children, you know, one son and daughter, they came back from the school and they had their food and then they were started fighting on some issue. And finally this younger boy, you know, slapped his sister, you know, the elder sister. She was around 13 years old and this boy was 10, 11 years old. So my friend's wife, you know, she brought both of them to me and said, you do something about him, you know. He is disturbing me all the time. And I don't know what to do with him. <coughs> so I just asked this boy, Vishu or Vishu, I asked Vishu, you tell me you want to make your sister happy or unhappy? He said, happy. 
very simple you know so then i asked him when you are you know fighting with her or you are beating her you know does it make it her happy and happy she said i'm happy <laughs> If you ask a young boy, this is the answer the state coming, you know. If you ask an old man or a grown-up, you know, educated people, they'll say, you know, after all, when people get problems. <laughs> 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 so that is But he said the state unhappy. Then I said, okay. You are trying to make, you want to make her happy, and you are making her unhappy. What do I conclude about you? You have a definite conduct or an indefinite conduct, certain conduct or uncertain conduct. It's an uncertain conduct. Very simple. Then I asked him, Do you know whom do you call mad? So he was silent. I said, I will make a definition, and you tell me whether it is right or not. So I said, A man with an uncertain conduct. We call mad. For example, if I give you food to eat and you start throwing at me, right? I will say that you are mad. Why? Because I expect a certain definite conduct from you, right? If you are given the food to eat, you will eat. Right? If you start throwing at me, the chapatis and everything, okay, I will call you mad. So my definition of mad is that man with uncertain conduct. What do you think? This definition is correct? He said yes. Perfect. I said then what do I conclude about you? <laughs> He said I am mad. <laughs> But this is when you talk young ones, right? Huh? Grown-ups will give you hundred excuses before. <laughs> then in the evening, when his father came from the office and he rang the bell, this boy went running. Opened the door and he said, "Father, you are mad." <laughs> so he was quite taken aback. He said, "What happened?" He said, "You tell me whether you want to make me happy or unhappy." <laughs> so he said, "I want to make you happy." Then the whole argument was repeated. That when you shout at me or when you beat me, you know, it makes me happy and happy. <laughs> so it was all concluded at the gate only. Right? <laughs> The father has to accept right? that he is mad. <laughs> <laughs> when he came inside, he asked me, "When are you going back?" <laughs> Because by the time he must have concluded that this revelation is because of my consistency, right? <laughs> But that's where we are, you know. This issue of definite conduct that we were asking, right? and this is what most of the, you know, children have concluded about the parents. They are not explicitly saying this, but they are afraid that we may start shouting at them or you know, start beating them, or that you know, start operating with inhuman conduct. But that is what they have concluded about it. So the point I was making that if you ask the children, they are straight forward, saying yes or no. If you ask the grown-up people, they will take you for a round, you know, before saying yes. So whether businessman or administration people or anybody, right? If you ask this question, they have not much option, right? Then only take time. Say yes. Working with the teachers, uh, to work for 
Yeah, I mean, society at large. This is the point to begin with. But this is not going to be enough. We certainly have to start working with the parents. We also have to work with the people who are taking decisions for the society. You know? <laughs> people in you know, administration, the people in politics, right? Because all of them have to start thinking in terms of this human consciousness. Otherwise, to give rise to a human society, you know, to an universal human order, would not be all that easy. But what we are saying, given the emergency, where do we start? It's, as an emergency, we are saying that it will be a good thing to start from education, to start. But we will also see, as we proceed, that to ensure this education is scarce, first we have to work with the teachers and the parents. Because the teachers have to have the competence to give right kind of education. The parents have to have the willingness to send their children right, for right education and sanskar. As Umesh you was telling that today even the parents have had the expectation that they should, you know, their children should get a job which can give them a very high package job. So they may not even be interested in sending the children to ensure right education and sanskar. So the parents have to be educated, the teachers have to be educated. Right? And that is what we keep calling as the, in the name of Dog Siksha, people's education. So trying to prepare the teachers and the parents to have right understanding and right feeling in them, so that they realize the importance of this education and sanskar. That is Dog Siksha, that is people's education. Now when we have the parents and the teachers, then we can give the education and sanskar, right education and sanskar to the children. So that would be in a way second step, you know, stage. So what we are doing here, what will you call? You will call it people's education or education and sanskar. That is trying to educate the parents and the teachers. Is that what we are doing? When one is when a father is shouting at children, uh, there are two. One is out of concern, out of love, is shouting. And another is maybe that father got a little irritation and then shouting. So ultimately, when it appears in form, it appears as a scolding. The child may not be happy, but for the long run, for the long run happiness, the father is scolding. So it depends on the uh, reality. And then a concern that a father is scolding out of love or out of you know, just a hatred. If we dissect, I think there are issues there. Maybe the example that we have given, if the father was really concerned about the future of his child, because in Buddhist we have a saying that, how do I translate that in English? <laughs> you really spoil you know, uh, by you know, tempering your child and then, you know, that's the wrong and that's uh, not out of the love. When a parent school or shout, there are two. One is out of love and concern so that he be in the right direction, in the longer run that he has a prosperous life. Other is that he is so a temporary, temporary measure, uh, 
uh, is not that, uh, you know, <coughs> for the long run, I out of concern that it was shouting at the king. So it's uh, for the good of the Yeah, see, at one level it is okay, what you are saying. But at another level, if I ask you to hear, when do you shout at this time or beat him? When you are comfortable or uncomfortable? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just, in, at one level what you are saying is quite clear to me, but I am looking at it at a little deeper level, you know, that if I have concern for the child, right, and if I am comfortable with him, then I will try to explain him, right, make him understand what is right, what is not right, right. If he is doing something very damaging, I may hold him by hand, not allow him to do it. Right? And then I will try to make him understand. But if I have become uncomfortable myself, right? I start shouting or I take to beating. Right? So the question is still open that when I am concerned for this child, right? how do I go about it? Do, do I go about it by way of ensuring right understanding and relation, healing in him? Or I am not working directly on this and if he does something otherwise, right, and I get disturbed right, and I shout at him for his good, which, which is better? Ensuring right understanding and feeling, right feeling in him through proper education in sanskar. This is good, better. Or allow him to get his files and then set him right by way of, you know, passing on lot of pictures and all those things. And see, this is the crux what we are saying, that every human being wants to understand what is right. They want to do what is right. And they have the capacity to understand what is right. It is therefore our responsibility right, to help them to understand what is right and help them to do what is right. And that's the meaning of education in sanskar. That's what you said. No, this education in sanskar would mean ensuring right understanding and Right, maybe. This is what every one of us want to do, right? And the child is anyway submitting you to ten, submitting you, you know, to you for 10, 15 years, trying to understand what you say is right and trying to do what you say is right, isn't it? And in those 10, 15 years, you are not able to convey to him what is right. Right? And you are not able to help him to do what is right. And therefore, whatever he collects from whatever you are doing and saying in the society, is saying, he starts doing that. And then you think that he is fine. Just imagine, the child, he is speaking the same language you are he is speaking, right? Isn't it? He has not questioned you. If you are speaking in English, the child will start learning. He will learn speaking in English. Right? If you are speaking in Hindi, he will learn speaking in Hindi. His accent will also be same as yours. Right? <laughs> so, so much so that by looking at the accent, you can tell where this person belongs to, know which area he belongs to. <laughs> so much of submission. The child has submitted to you thinking that you, you know what you are saying is right and what you are doing is right. But after some time, when he finds that what you are saying does not seem to be right, or what you are doing is not, you know, appearing to be right, then he gets into contradiction. Then he is in trouble. And then you are also in trouble, because then he does not accept you. 
All that happens because what is necessary for us to do as human beings for the children is not being done. The right education and the right sanskar is not made available to the children who are anyway submitting to us for 10 to 15 years. So this has to be done for every child. My child and for everybody's child. This has to be done. He really punished me. Hamarpa punished me.